Hello everyone. In this webinar, we will describe the basic principles of solid phase market extraction for method development. Just to give a general introduction about SPME, um, these techniques allow us to, um, to extract analyze via their free concentration, and these are non-exhaustive extraction method that minimize or in most cases completely avoids the use of organic solvents. SPME allows for simultaneous extraction and pre-concentration of the analytes of interest, and with the development of biocompatible uh, extraction phases, these techniques become uh, suitable for direct immersion in complex samples. SPME also allows for quantitative analysis. In fact, there are various calibration strategies that have been developed to satisfy uh, diverse analytical needs. And the geometry of the SPME device is customizable. And um, the type of uh, solvents that we can um, immobilize on SPME device can be tuned for high selectivity or uh, broad extraction coverage. SPME is compatible with the main separation platform, including gas chromatography, liquid chromatography, and capillary electrophoresis. And in the past uh, decade, a lot of work has been done to couple SPME device directly um, to uh, mass spectrometers. In this slide, I show different type of geometries that the technique um, can allow. Uh, you can see the classical fiber geometry and the in-tube geometry that consists of a capillary that is coated or packed with extraction phase. We have the thin film geometry that allows for um, enhanced uh, extraction kinetics. And we have different geometries of coated device that allows for micro extraction, including coated mesh and coated blades that allow for direct introduction to mass spectrometry via transmission mode dart or coated blade spray. When you want to de develop a new method, why should you consider SPME? Well, SPME integrates sampling and sample preparation in one step, so it actually avoids many of the analytical steps involved in the sample prep prior to instrumental analysis. It's simple and easy to use once the method is optimized, and it can actually allow for extraction from liquid, gas, or solid samples. The extraction can be tuned uh, to be carried out through the headspace or directly immersing the fiber in the sample. And the SPME fibers are reusable. So once you optimize the proper desorption and cleaning procedure, this device can be used up to 100 or 200 times. Nowadays, um, there are many type of commercially available auto samplers that allow automation of the extraction and desorption process. So this introduce further advantages for uh, routine sampling and analysis. And uh, also because of the miniaturized geometry of the SPME device, especially in fiber geometry, we can use this technique for on-site and in vivo analysis. Method development through SPME consists of three main uh, stages. Optimization of extraction condition, optimization of matrix modification, and optimization of desorption condition. Let's start describing what are the different steps that we need to optimize to improve our extraction uh, conditions. First of all is the selection of the fiber extraction phase that we also uh, call fiber coating. When you select the, uh, the most suitable extraction phase for your application, you always need to keep in mind the physical chemical properties of the analytes that you want to extract. 
that are different type of uh, SPME fibers that can extract analytes uh, with values polarity or volatility. In, for example, polydimethylsiloxane is a sorbent that is usually used for hydrophobic molecules, while polyacrylate is often used for polar molecules. Besides PDMS and polyacrylate, we have sorbents that include also sorptive particles, such as divinylbenzene, carboxane. So this type of um, SPME extraction phase, phases um, allow to tune the extraction coverage based on uh, molecular weight and uh, also volatility. Moreover, uh, we have now uh, commercially available a new type of extraction phase that um, is resistant to biofouling. Uh, we call it matrix compatible or overcoated fiber that consists of uh, PDMS DVB sorbents overcoated with a thin and smooth layer of polydimethylsiloxane. The role of this outer uh, PDMS um, layer is to prevent the attachment of matrix components and allows only the analytes of interest, only small molecules, to be extracted by the fiber. For LC analysis, we have um, other types of biocompatible extraction phases that are based on polyacrylate. In these fibers, polyacrylate is mixed with uh, sorptive particles such as uh, C18 or mixed mode particles that consist in C18 or C8 moieties together with benzenosulfonic acid. So this guarantees uh, uh, extraction using a different type of uh, intermolecular interaction with your analytes. In this slide, I show how the selection of your extraction phase can drastically change the outcome of your analysis. Let's have a look at these three chromatograms obtained uh, after the extraction of coffee uh, brew samples via Headspace SPME. When we extract with the PD, uh, PDMS DVB sorbent, um, we have extraction of higher molecular weight compounds. In fact, DVB can extract higher molecular weight compounds with uh, medium, let's say, to low volatility. When we perform the extraction of exactly the same sample, using carboxen PDMS, you can see that we can extract way better compounds with low molecular weight and high volatility. In fact, they elute at the very first uh, stage of your chromatogram. When you use PDMS in this specific case, the extraction coverage is not great because eventually the um, headspace of these coffee brew samples does not contain analytes that have uh, hydrophobicity that are the ones that are best extracted with polydimethylsiloxane. In this slide, I also show the effect of the selection of the extraction phase for analytes that are analyzed via liquid chromatography. As you can see, C18 sorbent tends to extract better those compounds with higher log Ps, meaning higher hydrophobicity, while coatings such as HLB, hydrophilic lipophilic balance, they provide a balanced coverage between the hydrophobic analytes and the more polar analytes. It's very important to mention that before you start doing your SPME extraction, your fibers need to be preconditioned. What does that mean? It means that according to the analytical techniques that you are using, to the type of instrument you are using, you need to activate the coating and clean up the extraction phase from any potential interference. 
When we do gas chromatography, we perform a thermal preconditioning where we expose our extraction phase to the GC injector. And we also need to be aware and follow closely the manufacturer recommended preconditioning temperature and time. It's also important to uh, activate the split flow when you perform preconditioning, such to avoid contamination of your GC inject injector. When you do solvent-based preconditioning, it's important to uh, immerse the fiber for some time in a, a mixture of aqueous and organic solvents. This allows for the pores of the, in the coating to be wetted and activate the, the extraction phase. Generally, 30 minutes is enough for preconditioning uh, using solvents. And because you are actually uh, wetting your extraction phase using organic solvent, it's always recommended before extraction that a short rinsing in water is applied to remove the, ex the excess of organic solvent. And I will show you later in the webinar why it's very important to control and minimize the amount of organic solvent um, in the um, extraction process. So let's explain uh, a little bit more in details uh, the extraction mechanism uh, when we use different type of SPME extraction phases. We have two classes of SPME extraction phases that can be um, classified as, li as, as liquid coatings that they are generally PDMS and polyacrylate. In liquid coating, the extraction mechanism takes place by absorption. This means that the molecules are solvated by the coating and permeate the whole volume of the extraction phase. On the other side, we have solid coatings that extract via adsorption. This means that the sorption only occurs on the porous surface of the extraction phase. And we need to be careful because uh, in very complex samples at very high concentration, we can actually saturate uh, our extraction phase and induce displacement of the um, analytes with low partition coefficient. However, I need to clarify and highlight that saturation and displacement phenomena do not happen often when the method optimization is carried out properly. And there are a lot of tricks that you can use um, to make sure um, your um, SPME fiber doesn't saturate. Example of solid coatings are PDMS, DVB, Carbox and PDMS, DVB, Carbox and PDMS, HLB PAN and PS DVB PAN. Let's now have a look uh, at how uh, the SPME fiber assembly uh, looks like. So when we want to do manual injection, we have to use a holder in which we assemble the fibers and allows us to perform manual injection mainly in GC without breaking the fiber. However, um, nowadays there are uh, bodies auto samplers that are designed and manufactured by different companies that allowed for fully automated SPME process. With auto-samplers, we just assemble our SPME fiber in the proper uh, holder. And then the auto-sampler will perform automatic extraction, incubation of the sample, and desorption into the instrument. Super elastic SPME fibers are also available. And these SPME fibers um, are made with a flexible metal alloy that actually allows to obtain enhanced robustness of our extraction phase and sample, sam and sample matrices that, um, such as, bio, uh, such as uh, bio tissues and like semi-solids or hydrogels. Uh, 
Another step of our optimization of the extraction condition involves selecting the extraction mode. We can uh, um, select our extraction mode according to the analyzed physical chemical properties, but also according to the complexity of our samples. When we have analytes that are very volatile, uh, we may want to choose headspace mode. Headspace mode gives us the um, opportunity also to sample solids and very complex liquids that otherwise will damage the fiber coating uh, if, um, if directly immersed into, it, into them. So headspace is very helpful, helpful when uh, sampling um, dirty and complex samples. However, we also we always take into consideration that in order to improve the mass transfer of our analytes into the headspace, meaning be able to extract more with our SPME Fabio, we sometimes need to do some sample modification. On the other hand, when we want to analyze low to medium volatility and high to medium polarity analytes, we can opt for direct immersion. While in the past direct, direct immersion applications were limited um, based on the complexity of the samples uh, that we want to analyze, um, now, uh, with the development of matrix-compatible coatings, uh, we can actually do direct immersion without damaging the, uh, the extraction phase. And direct immersion has advantages such as higher extraction efficiency, because you are directly extracting the analytes in their native phase without having to move them into the headspace. As I was mentioning, uh, we have two types of matrix compatible or biocompatible extraction phases. Uh, one type is for GC, and this is the one that you see in the left part of the slide that we called um, overcoated fiber. And the other type is used for LC application, and it's based on polyacrylonitrile, and we call it biocompatible LC fiber probe. One other parameter that you, um, you need to optimize uh, when uh, um, you want to uh, tune your extraction condition is the agitation method. Optimizing the uh, agitation method allows you to uh, improve the kinetic of the extraction and speed up your analysis, achieving the sample throughput that uh, you desired. An example of the effect of the agitation uh, strategy on your results is given on those two graphs uh, at the, on the left side of the slide. When we have, for example, let's say steering rate that is 75% efficient just to have some normalization, Let's say we reach equilibrium for our analytes at about 30 minutes. When we improve the efficiency of the uh, agitation method, we can actually uh, decrease the equilibration time down to 15 minutes. We can use different uh, methods to uh, apply agitation uh, for our uh, samples. The most commonly used method is uh, magnetic steering, and it's uh, widely used because it does not require sophisticated equipment. However, uh, cross-contamination can be introduced in the sample through the steer bar. And we also have that steering for longer amount of times can cause the steer plate to heat up and changing the sample volume in a way that we cannot control. So that leads to irreproducible results. 
Bird steering uh, is often used uh, and is actually a very efficient method, uh, especially for trace analysis, because it really helps improving the mass transfer of the analytes in the sample. And it can be applied both to large volume sample and small volume samples. Sonication is one of the most efficient methods to be used um, for agitation. And it can drastically shorten the equilibration times. However, um, the temperature of the sonication bath may change randomly, so that will change the temperature of your sample, leading to low reproducibility. And uh, because of the vigorous agitation that sonication provides, it can reduce fiber lifetime. However, this was particularly true for all generation SPME fibers that were coated on fused silica, but new generation SPME fiber are mainly coated on metal alloys. That give the coating uh, the extraction phase on metal alloys provide the device with enhanced robustness. So this new generation device can also handle sonication and endure sonication quite well. In this slide, I show um, different type of agitation system for SPME, starting from uh, the classical magnetic steering plate, and then we can also use orbital agitation and other type of automated agitation. Vortex agitation is often used when for autosampler, both for GC and LC analysis. There are situations in which we cannot agitate the sample, and that's when we perform tissue analysis, especially when that's performed in vivo. So when static extraction takes place, we need to expect longer extraction time to achieve the desired sensitivity. Let's see now why it's important to optimize the extraction time. One of the most common questions that um, I get asked by SPME users, students, and colleagues is, what is the optimum extraction time? Well, my response is often, is always actually, it depends on the objective of your analysis. What I mean to say is that uh, according to um, the purpose of our analytical methods, we may want to achieve high throughput analysis or high sensitivity. Always we need, we need to guarantee good reproducibility. So in case where um, we want very fast analysis and we can achieve enough sensitivity, we can use pre-equilibrium condition, especially with solid sorbents that tend to have longer equilibration times. If we, our purpose is to achieve high sensitivity and we are not really concerned about the uh, time of the extraction, then we can uh, wait to, uh, for equilibrium time to be reached and perform um, extraction in equilibrium condition. How can we achieve good reproducibility? Well, as you can see in this graph, once you reach equilibrium, uh, the um, the type of the extent of the error that you can perform, it's minimized unless you are changing some other thermodynamic parameters for your extraction system. However, when you move to precondition equilibrium, even a small mistake, a small error on the extraction time translates in a large relative error in the amount of analyte extracted. How can we uh, solve this? Well. If you do manual SPME, then you need to practice a lot in order to be able to control your extraction time very precisely. Or if you use an auto sampler, you can actually achieve extremely good reproducibility even at pre-equilibrium condition because um, you can um, closely control the timing of your extraction using the auto sampler. 
Let's now see uh, how sample volume needs to be optimized and can be uh, tuned uh, to do SPME extractions. In this slide, I show a little bit of equation related to the SPME theory. And in particular, this equation on the left side of the slide shows the correlation between the amount of analyte extracted and the concentration of that analyte in the sample. So this direct correlation is what allows us to achieve quantitative results with SPME. However, we can also see that the amount of um, analyte extracted depends on other parameters, such as the volume of the sample, the volume of the extraction phase, and the partition coefficient between the extraction phase and the sample. So these slides tell us that changing the volume of the sample will change the amount extracted. However, when the volume of the sample is significantly higher, than the product between the volume of the extraction phase and the partition coefficient, we can simplify our initial equation to a shorter form, to a shorter version, where the amount of an analyte extracted is still dependent on the partition coefficient, the volume of the extraction phase, and the concentration in the sample, but is independent from the sample volume. So this is a very important feature of SPME because, because actually allows us to perform quantitative analysis in system where sample volume is unknown or difficult to calculate, such as on site analysis, for example, in rivers or lakes, or in vivo sampling. When we select our sample volume, we also need to take into consideration sample availability. Many environmental samples or food samples can be acquired in the lab like with no problem. But for example, think about biofluids or bio tissues. Sometimes it's very difficult to collect them in large amounts. So the sample volume in that case is limited from, is limited by the sample availability. We also need to consider that if we uh, perform extraction using automation, uh, different auto samplers they have defined vial size that they can accommodate. So um, we need um, to consider our sample volume based on uh, the vial size. And also we need to consider the sample volume based on the extraction condition. What I mean is the following. Look at these uh, graphics for uh, headspace and direct immersion SPME. When we do headspace, it's important that we leave enough headspace um, available for the fiber to extract. And when we tune the amount of liquid samples that we introduce in the vial, we need to make sure that during the extraction we don't have uh, splashes of liquid onto the fiber because that will actually um, affect the reproducibility of our uh, extraction. When we do direct immersion SPME, it's mandatory that the whole volume of our extraction phase is completely covered by liquid, because if it is not, we will have also irreproducible extraction. Let's move now to the second uh, section of the um, method development. Uh, for SPME methods that consist in uh, optimizing what matrix modification we need to perform. One uh, very important uh, parameter that we need to set for our sample is the pH. Especially when we do gas chromatography, we want to extract our analytes in their free form. And, uh, in order to do that, we, um, we can extract analytes with most commercially available uh, extraction phase in, uh, in their neutral form or non-dissociated species. This means that we need to tune the pH of our sample such as that all our analytes are in their neutral form. 
We also need to be careful because very low and very high pH can actually damage the fiber coating. In this slide, I show actually how the extraction efficiency for this organic acid um, decrease by changing the pH because what is decreasing here is the fraction of the neutral form of this acid. Another important parameter to optimize is ionic strength. We can tune the uh, ionic strength of our solution by addition of salts. So adding salts to our solution um, induce an effect called salting out. Salting out is very useful uh, for SPM extraction because it increases the partition uh, coefficient and improves the sensitivity in most application. And uh, the uh, salting out effect is especially useful when we perform headspace analysis and we want to improve the capacity of the headspace, meaning improve the mass transfer of the analytes from the sample to the headspace. How can we optimize and how can we choose the type of salts that we need to add to our solution to induce salting out? Well, we can consider the off mainster series for cations and anions that tells us what, what ions have more ability to salt out. Optimization of the ionic strength also help us to minimize the variability in ionic strengths in biological samples, for example, or we can use it as a cleanup strategy. However, we also always need to be careful because increase the um, ionic strength and inducing salting out of our analytes may potentially also induce salting out of interfering species. Sample dilution is another parameter that we may want to consider when uh, performing method optimization, especially when dealing with very complex samples that are very dense. Uh, we may have a reduction of extraction efficiency for different reasons. One, it can be the absorption of the analytes uh, in uh, heterogeneous samples. The other one can be slower diffusion process, and the third one can be decreased free concentration of the analytes because of binding. Remember, SPME can only extract analytes in their free concentration. So, sample dilution, uh, it can help minimize, also minimize uh, fouling of the extraction phase and improve the lifetime of the coating. And it can also increase the free concentration of the analytes in the sample, disrupting any type of absorption or binding equilibria that has been established and helps to avoid saturation for solid coatings in case you want to extract like very complex samples. However, you need to be careful because if you dilute too much, of course, you are going to uh, decrease drastically the concentration of your analytes in solution, meaning you are going to decrease the recovery via SPME. Let's now have a look uh, at how the presence of organic solvent in your sample can affect the extraction recovery. What you need to keep in mind is that the amount of organic solvent during an SPME process should always be kept at minimum. This is because every time you introduce an additional phase to your extraction system, you are actually um, introducing an additional phase that competes with the extraction phase for the partition of the analytes. This means that your extraction recovery can be uh, can be lower. So in this slide, you see, for example, how addition of different percent of ethanol in sample drastically reduce the amount recovered. It's generally recommended that uh, the amount of organic solvent in the sample is kept uh, between 1% to 5% in volume. Uh, and uh, 
even a 0.5% variation in organic solvent may seriously affect your recovery. For example, when you build a calibration curve uh, that will need to be um, analyzed via SPME, you always need to make sure that you spike the same amount of organic solvent at different calibration levels. Otherwise, the presence of organic solvent will drastically affect the linearity of your calibration curve. On the other hand, um, adding some organic solvent can actually uh, help to release some analytes that are bound to matrix components. So it's always good to study, uh, especially when you have high level of binding in your samples, if adding a little bit of matrix modifier can help to disrupt those binding equilibria and bring your analytes uh, in, the, in the sample as a free, uh, in their free form. Let's now move into analyte derivatization. What is analyte derivatization? Analyte derivatization is uh, a strategy to modify the molecular uh, structure, the physical chemical properties of your analytes to enhance extraction efficiency or to enhance the detection sensitivity in your instrument, or to make compounds more amenable to a particular mode of analysis. An example can be uh, often um, we have some very polar analytes that uh, do not volatilize properly, meaning they cannot be analyzed via GC. If we properly derivatize them, they can acquire enough volatility to become GC amenable. We can do two types of derivatization, one prior during extraction that can actually improve or affect the, both the extraction and the chromatographic and detection behavior, and one type of derivatization that is post-extraction that is only aimed at improve the instrumental uh, performance for your analyte. Always remember that Every time you do the derivatization, you are introducing the derivatization agents, agents in your sample, so that can bring additional sources of interference. So always perform the derivatization when it's strictly necessary. Via SPME, we can have uh, different modes uh, and different strategy that we can perform the derivatization. One of the most used is the sample derivatization followed by SPME extraction. What we can do is to un uh, add the derivatization reagents to our samples and allows for the uh, and allow for the derivatization reaction to take place. Once the process is complete, we uh, introduce the fiber in our sample and we extract the derivatized analytes and we allow for the SPME proce process also to uh, complete. And then we um, desorb our analytes in the GC injector. Another type of derivatization uh, involves SPME extraction followed by on fiber derivatization. So in order to do this, we need to have our sample and a separate vial that contain the derivatization agent only. So what we will do, we will first expose the fiber to our sample and extract the underivatized analytes. Once the, uh, you uh, um, have left the fiber in the sample for the optimized extraction time, then you move the fiber into the derivatization agent vial and you allow the derivatization agent to reach the uh, extraction phase. When this happens, your analytes get derivatized on the fiber. Once the derivatization process takes place, you can then um, desorb your analytes in the injector. 
The third mode is simultaneous extraction and on-fiber derivatization. So this mode of derivatization consists in first exposing your fiber to the derivatization agent and preloading the derivatization agent on the fiber. And then expose the fiber to your sample and allow the extraction to take place. So what will happen is that once the analytes get extracted on uh, the fiber, they will get in contact with the derivatization agent that was preloaded on the fiber and the derivatization reaction takes place. After this happens, you can desorb your analyte in your instrument. Another very important parameter that I mentioned several times during this presentation is sample temperature. Why is this parameter important? Sample temperature has, can have different and opposite actually effects on your SPME extraction. When you increase the extraction temperature, you can actually increase the analyte diffusion coefficients and the headspace capacity because you improve the mass transfer of the analytes from the sample to the headspace and you can speed up your extraction process. On the other hand, high temperature also induce a decrease of the partition coefficient of the analytes between the fiber and the samples, meaning you are decreasing the amount of analytes that you are extracting at equilibrium. In this figure, uh, in the right side of the slide, I show this effect, for example, um, look at the extraction that takes place at 22 degrees Celsius. The kinetic is very slow because the temperature is low. Once you start increasing the temperature, let's say at 40 minutes, you see how faster your extraction takes place. However, when you further increase your um, extraction to 60 and 73 degrees, you notice that the amount that you extract at equilibrium is drastically lower compared to what you extract at 60 degrees and 40 degrees. In this um, graph, I show you uh, again the effect of the uh, sample temperature on different class of compounds. We have substitute benzenes that are very volatile and PAH that, PAHs that have higher molecular weight and lower volatility. For substitute benzenes, we can notice that after 60 degrees, that temperature is above 60 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, our partition coefficients are start to be affected by the temperature and the amount extracted decreases. While for PAHs, we do not have this phenomena because the PAHs um, the only effect that the increase of temperature uh, achieve is to improve their diffusion coefficients. Let's now move uh, into the third part of, third and last part of this webinar that um, describes how to optimize the sorption condition when you perform GC analysis and LC analysis. When you perform GC analysis, there are three main parameters that you need to pay attention and optimize. The carrier gas flow rate, the desorption temperature, and the desorption time. In order to optimize and keep high carrier gas flow rates, you need to use narrow bore liners, and I will tell you a little bit more about it in the next slide, and actually activate splitless mode, mode during desorption. Splitless mode allows you to uh, quantitatively transfer your analytes from the fiber to the GC injector and to the column, achieving higher sensitivity. Um, when you optimize the desorption temperature, you need to make sure you, you use the um, 
a high uh, temperature that allows you to uh, quantitatively disturb your analytes. However, you always have to keep in mind the recommended desorption temperatures that your uh, manufacturer provides for different type of SPME extraction phases. When you optimize the desorption time, you always want to make sure that you avoid carryover phenomena. Carryover phenomena is when you do not desorb your analytes quantitatively and part of what you extract is left on the fiber after desorption. So in order to minimize carryover, it's suggested that you perform a desorption time profile, meaning you, you desorb the fiber at different times and then you check what, what desorption time provides me with the highest amount of analytes desorbed. Let's go a little bit more in details on the parameters that we need to optimize for GC. I was talking in the previous slide about the effect of the flow rate velocity. It's always good to keep high linear flow rate in your injector because that will provide a more efficient and fast transfer of your analytes from the extraction phase to the injector and the column. If you keep lower linear flow rate, your analytes will uh, jump in and out on your fiber and will reach the, uh, the column um, later uh, and at different times in using broad chromatographic peaks. The injector volume also is important to be considered for your desorption because remember, when you desorb SPME fiber, you don't have any uh, solvent uh, that you need to take into account. So you don't need that extra space in your injector, injector to allow for solvent expansion as you will do when you directly inject solvent. So in this case, with SPME, it's always suggest to use another bore liner with internal diameter from 1 to 0 0.75 millimeters. If you are doing manual uh, SPME injection, always remember to expose your extraction phase immediately after you pierce the septum with the uh, SPME needle assembly. If if you are very slow or relatively slow in exposing your extraction phase after, um, after you introduce the SPME device in the injector, what will happen is that your analytes will start to desorb in the main needle and then they will distribute all through the um, GC uh, liner. This will uh, induce split peaks that you don't want to have. So the solution to this problem is to expose the fiber very soon so that the analytes, they are all desorbed at the same time and they actually create very narrow chromatographic bands that will bring to very sharp peaks. Let's see now how desorption needs to be carried out for LC analysis. When you perform LC analysis, your fiber need to be desorbed in a system of solvents that then need to be injected in the liquid chromatograph. The way you need to optimize the type of solvents that you use that is usually one uh, that is usually water mixed with different uh, miscible solvents is um, is to obtain the highest recovery, the lowest carryover the shorter desorption time, and also this desorption solvent need to be compatible with your um, mobile phase system that you are using for your method. Solvent volume needs um, also uh, to be optimized carefully because it affects the sensitivity and actually you can uh, achieve quite good pre-concentration if you minimize the solvent volume that you are using. Desorption time is also important in this case because remember the diffusion coefficients of molecules in liquid phase are order of magnitude lower than in the gas phase. So this implies that when you desorb uh, 
um, your SPME fibers in solvents, you need to you you need to do that for longer than you will do when you desorb your fiber in the um, GC injector via thermal desorption. In order to improve the connecting of the desorption, you can also choose to agitate your desorption solution while the fiber is desorbing. In this slide, I collect some tips and tricks that uh, uh, can be useful um, when you optimize your uh, SPME method. One of the most common mistakes and issues uh, like the low reproducibility and low linearity of calibration curve because of valuable content of organic solvent in spike sample that we discussed earlier on. So the trick to solve this issue is to keep the organic solvent content at the same level for all samples. Another common mistake that induces uh, irreproducible results with SPME is um, heating the steering plate when using man the heating of the steering plate when using man magnetic steers. If the heat distribution around the sample is not homogeneous, your extraction will be irreproducible because of the effect of the sample temperature. So a good strategy to avoid this issue is to isolate the vial from the steering plate by placing a septum between the vial and the steerer surface. I also want to mention that uh, considering how many uh, parameters you need to consider when you optimize an uh, SPME method, it could be a good idea to use multivariate approaches that allows you to perform the optimization with a relatively small number of experiments, but also they allow you to understand if there is any synergistic effect between factors that affect the extraction recovery. A common uh, multivariate approach that are used, they are classified to screening design that you can use like to have a general and broad screening about what type of condition you want to, you can use for your analysis. And there are fractional factorial design and plucket Berman design. And then you can refine um, the optimize, the, you can actually refine your condition and find the optimal optimal parameters using optimization design such as central composite design and full factorial design. 